Isambard King de Brunel had the idea of linking London to America. This included building ships, the railway line, and everything else that the railway line would run over. This included tunnels, bridges, and the stations. An example of a bridge he built is one seen behind me, Morsel Bridge. He wanted to make everything the best he could and to the best of his abilities. Hence why he tried to create the lowest gradients on the railway track and also the lowest profile bridges. Isambard King de Brunel was born on the 9th of April 1806 in Portsmouth. During his early life, he was educated by his father and from the age of four, his father taught him drawing. He was encouraged to draw interesting buildings and point out their structural flaws. In 1826, he was placed in charge of the construction of the Thames Tunnel. Brunel's career then took off in earnest, and in 1833, he was made chief engineer on the Great Western Railway, one of the great wonders of Victorian England. Between 1835 and 1839, he turned his attention largely to the design of three huge passenger ships. The SS Great Western, the SS Great Britain, and the SS Great East Eastern. The design Brunel is best remembered for is arguably the Clifton Suspension Bridge. Today it is a Grade 1 listed building and a part of the B3129. At the time, however, it was revolutionary. In 1829, a competition was held for a good design that could span the River Avon, linking Bristol with North Somerset. A Scottish engineer, Thomas Telford, on the judging committee was chosen to choose a winner. He, however, proposed his own design, and that one won. By the first few months of 1830, some of the funds had been raised. But then Brunel proposed a new design that was £10,000 cheaper and gained local support for it. Since they never began building Telford's Bridge, another judging committee was assembled, and the winner was Smith & Hawke's foundry of Birmingham. Brunel had a word with a few members of the committee, however, and got them to scrap that design and back his in its place. Brunel's design had, by fair means or foul, won, and he was made project engineer. The general public stated that it would be absurd to even attempt to cross the bridge with a single span. However, Brunel seemed to think that he could do it. Today, there are three chains at each side of the bridge, which support its great weight. They are not fixed to the top of the towers, but rather mounted on rollers, and this is to facilitate their movement. Although this movement is minuscule, it does prevent much damage to the bridge and chains when loads travel over it. On the 21st of June 1831, the project was scheduled to start, but a few days, but a few days later the project was put on hold by the Bristol riots. In 1836 the project resumed, but in 1843 funds were exhausted, and a further £30,000 were needed. Work was stopped completely. Despite trying to get the bridge finished, Brunel finally accepted defeat and allowed the remaining unused metal to be sold to make the Brunel design Royal Albert Station. The fact that they began to make the bridge at all is remarkable and a testament to the calibre of Brunel's character. But when he died in 1859, it looked as though the bridge may never be completed. But, however, following his death, Brunel's college from the Institute of Civil Engineers decided to raise funds from which to finish the bridge. In 1860, Brunel's Hungerford Suspension Bridge over the Thames was demolished, and Brunel's ex-colleagues bought the chains from it. After some slight revisions to the design, people began working on the bridge once more in 1862, and the bridge was finally finished two years later. Compared with today's engineers, Brunel was incredibly versatile. He was so much more than an engineer. He was a visionary, able to persuade people to finance his projects, even after earlier ones had failed. He took on the design of every last detail of his projects, from tunnels to ships to railways. Then he built them. Finally, he operated them. There is no comparison to today's projects, which are all about minim minimising risk. Brunel's undertakings were unheard of, in their scope, and it took great courage and determination to pull them off.